Welcome to day two of drag and resistive forces. Drag was kind of what we did before. Now we're going to talk about resistive forces. This is typically lower speeds, things like that. But buckle up because this is maybe one of the hardest lessons. Later on in the year, this won't be so bad because you'll know the calculus more. But you're going to be seeing it for the first time today. And people say this is one of the toughest lessons for them because of the calculus that we're doing that's involved. So um, just some, some kind of review in order for us to figure out what's going on, because we're going to be dealing with exponentials. Um, if we have 4 equals e to the negative t, right, how would we solve this um, if we were to try to solve for t? The way that we solve this is we take the natural log of both sides. So I take the natural log of 4, so natural log of 4 equals, and when I take the natural log of e to the negative t, the negative t comes down in front. Right? So this is negative t natural log of e, but natural log of e is just 1. So natural log of 4, sorry, let's try that again. Natural log of 4 is negative t. And so what this comes out to, um, you know, t is negative natural log of 4, which is 1.39, negative 1.39. Okay? Pretty simple, right? Um, for the next one, 0.5 equals e to the negative t. Well, then we have natural log of 0.5 equals negative t. So that means t is the negative of this, and we get 0 0.69. Okay. This should not be hard yet, by the way. This should be uh, pretty simple stuff. See, we're looking at 0.5 equals e to the negative 5t. Hmm. Okay, so now we have a coefficient on the t in the exponent. So how does this change things? We end up with natural log of 0 0.5 equals negative 5t. So that means t is equal to negative 1 over 5 natural log of 0.5. So it's like I'm taking this. Sorry, this should have been negative. It's like I'm taking this, and I'm just dividing by 5. So this ends up as uh, 1.39. And this should not be negative, actually. This is going to be positive. right? Because in order to get 0.5, e to the what will give me 0.5? Well, 0.5 is less than e, and so it has to be a negative exponent. So it's a negative of a negative, and we get that thing, right? Think of, think of logs as just backwards exponents. e to the what power will give me this number, and the what power, that's your answer. Same thing here, right? Um, e to what power will give me 0.5, and then I multiply it by negative 1.5. Um, and so this one, this one should actually end up being negative because this will be negative. Oh, no, no, positive, sorry. It all works out. Good. D. So now we have another thing. So 0. 0.5 equals e to the negative 2t over 5. All right, we're working out because we're going to have this type of thing in our equations here, and we're going to be doing calculus with it. So you see it's piling up. So this is going to be natural log of 0 0.5 equals negative 2 fifths t. That means t is going to be negative 5 halves natural log of 0 0.5. Yeah. And then this ends up being 1.7. Okay, good. So that's, that's good in terms of calculations. Now let's look at some graphs of these things and see how this works. Okay, if I have y equals e to the t, what does that look like? Right. That's going to look something like this. It's going up. Um, but if I have y e to the negative t, that means I'm starting off here. Um, if this were 0, this would just be 1. right? But as t gets bigger, uh, this value is going to decrease. So it actually looks like this. right? This is an asymptote to 0. So now let's try this, this next thing. Um, if y equals g e to the negative b over m times t, you're going to see that's going to become very familiar. This, instead of being 1, it's going to start at this value of g. Okay, And then this is negative, so it's still going to be going down like this. It's going to be asymptotic to that. Um, if I look at y equals negative e to the t, 
So we're putting a negative in front. That just looks like this. I drew the graph the wrong way. Right, the, like the graph we had before just flipped over the horizontal axis. And then, but if y equals e negative e to the negative t, that's going to look like this, right? But if instead of starting at 0, or rather starting at 1, if I say that y equals 1 minus e to the negative t, then this starts off at 1 and gets closer to 0. So this whole thing is going to get closer to 1. So this is 1. This is going to look like this. All right. But now, if I take this same thing, and instead of having 1 there, I have some coefficient in front, like alpha, then this just replaces alpha, and it's approaching this value of alpha as time goes on. All right. And then, so kind of like we had before, if instead of alpha I have something like, I don't know, mg over b, minus e to the negative b over m times t. So now I have a coefficient on this, but that's not going to affect the fact that this is still um, getting closer and closer to 0 as time goes on. And this is 1, but I'm starting, instead of starting at 1, um, or going to 1, I'm going to mg over b. That's my asymptote there. Hey. I got my microphone, so are you recording and listen? I am. Oh, sorry. That's right. I can pause it. Say hi to Mr. E, everybody. Hey, Mr. E. Are these my uh, AP Physics C kids? Yes, they are. Love you. All right. So we're going to look at these equations of motion. We're going to derive these, and then we're going to be using them again and again. It gets complicated, but it's the same process that you do again and again and again. So just when you're learning it, go through and follow the steps, and then eventually you'll be doing the same thing. And we're going to use this now. We're going to use it later. Uh, same process. So what we end up with is uh, if we imagine something you know, falling down, and it's, it's reaching its terminal velocity, whatever it is, uh, as it's speeding up, this is mg, and this is r. Let's call it r for now. So mg minus r equals ma, mass times the acceleration. The acceleration is down, so I'm going to make down positive here. Um, if I substitute in here, so here r equals uh, negative bv, right? So mg minus bv equals m. Now I'm going to put this in terms of v. So this a is dv dt, right? Uh, so what I'm going to do now is divide by m. So I get g minus bv over m equals dv dt. Right. Um, this now is what we call a differential equation. And watch what happens. I'm going to bring dt over to this side. Since v is here and v is here, I want to get v, this v with uh, this v over here. So I'm going to divide everything over here. I'm going to say, um, so I'll put dt on this side, multiply dt over to this side, equals um, 1 over g minus bv over m times dv. If I were to solve this differential equation, right, I integrate both sides. So integrate this side dt, integrate this side. Then what I would end up with is what we have on the next side. All right, that vt, v is a function of time, is uh, 1 minus mg over b, 1 minus e to the negative b over m times t. And we're going to see that form of the equation again and again and again. So uh, get used to it. So what are the units of the quantity b? Well, b over m, this has to cancel out and have no units, right? Or rather have units of um, you know, time. So this is being divided by kilograms and multiplied by time. So b has units of um, kilograms per second. 
right? So what happens when t is equal to mb? When t is equal to mb, then this whole thing is equal to 1. Okay, that's what we call one time constant. We're going to have, you know, at one time, you'll see what, how that plays in. So just pay attention to that. Um, and then we call that time it takes, so what do we call that time? We call it one time constant. There it is. That's the, the answer to that question. Um, and then here's the derivation, how we get that in the first place. Right? Um, taking a look at, uh, taking the derivative, we have acceleration. Acceleration is dv dt. So we take, if we take the time derivative of this, then we end up with um, a equals g e to the negative b over m times t. So what, is, what does this mean? This means here that um, when a is equal to, or at the initial time at time 0, this whole thing is equal to just 1. Right, so at the initial time, g is equal to, or the acceleration is equal to g. But then as time goes on, this whole thing gets smaller and smaller. Right? What's happening here? At initial time, this is 1. So this starts off at 0. That makes sense. The initial velocity is 0. But as time goes on, the velocity reaches a certain, um, uh, it's going to reach a certain maximum velocity, which is mg over b. Because right? this whole thing on the inside then is getting closer to, uh, to 1. Right? As this goes to 0, this gets closer to 1. So 1 times this. So the velocity time graph, I think that's what we have, the velocity time graph, yeah, mg over b, looks like this, and the acceleration versus time graph, looks like this, starts off at g. So whatever the coefficient is, that's either your initial value or it's your asymptote. If the, for, if the equation is this form, where it's not 1 minus, it's just e to the whatever, then it's going asymptotically to zero. But if it's of this form, one minus e, then this is the asymptote. It's coming up to that. Right? So you're going to see these two forms again and again here and in the future. So get used to that. So example one, a small sphere of mass 0 0.002 kilograms is released from rest in a large vessel filled with oil. The sphere has a terminal velocity of 0 0.05 meters per second. Calculate the time constant. So remember the time constant is just the um, that b over m thing. I don't know what b is, because i got to do this first. r equals bv, that's the resistive force. But we're saying here is that the resistance force is equal to the force of gravity. Right? So this is going to be mg equals bv. And so b is going to be equal to mg over v. mg is going to be, this thing has a mass of 0 0.002 kilograms. Um, and the velocity, so 0 0.05, so 0 0.02 newtons over 0 0.05 meters per second. So B is going to be um, 196. Right, so that's part A. For part B, now I want to know, the, calculate the time it takes to reach 90% of V term. Okay, so what does that mean? So V is equal to... Now, the terminal velocity is um, you know, whatever, whatever it is. We don't even really need to know because uh, we're saying that we're reaching 90% of it. So I've got some V term here. That's what this is. Um, and this is 1 minus e to the negative B over M times T. But this is going to be 90% of this. So if I do 0.9 v term equals v term 1 minus e to the negative 196 t, v term goes away. And now I'm just solving for t. Right? And how do we solve for t? Well, we solve it by taking the natural log of both sides. So natural log of 0.9 equals 1 minus e to the negative or Sorry. Uh, so first thing I actually have to do, I'm not ready to solve it yet. I need to uh, subtract 1 from both sides. So I end up with 0.1 equals negative e to the negative 196 times t. Right, you see how that works? 
so I do, or rather 0.9 minus 1, so I get negative 0.1. And then this, this is negative, so they cancel out. It's just arithmetic. And then, so natural log of 0.1 equals negative 196 times t. And so t is equal to negative 1 over 196 natural log of 0.1. Uh, and that turns out to be 0 0.0117 seconds. So in, you know, 12 tenths of a second, this has already reached 90% of v-term. So it's slowing down very fast. All right, what about the time it takes to reach 95%? Well, if I've got 95%, if this is 0.95, let's go back to this place. If this is 0.95, that means I'm doing 0.95 minus 1. So instead of this being 0.1, it's going to be 0.05. Right? So for C, it's going to be natural log of 0 0.05 equals negative 196t. So I, if I repeat this, instead of 0 0.1, I put in 0 0.05, then I end up with a time of 0 0.0153 seconds. Right? So more time goes on, it gets slower, uh, or rather it doesn't, it doesn't get slower, it gets faster, but it gets that much closer to V term. Um, and then question D asks, when does it reach 99.999% of V term? Okay, so this is annoying because if I put in, you know, um, point, and this is five nines, right? So point nine 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 nine, and I do that minus one, uh, what I end up with is natural log of point one, two, three, four, five was negative 196t. But if I do this same calculation, I just put in here, you know, 0 0.000001, you know, with that many ones, then I end up with t equals um, 0 0.050, 0 0.587 seconds. Okay. All right, so now we're going to get into some, these are real real AP problems, right, and there are three of them. How much time do we already have on this video? May have to cut this into two videos. <clears throat>